Welcome back to the E30K swap build and we're here with episode 8 where we're going to be tackling the cooling system and wiring. The first cooling hoses we're going to hook up are actually the ones that run to the heater core. So one here runs from the heater core to the back of the head on the motor and the other one runs into the thermostat. I couldn't really get the camera under the intake to show how the rest was hooked up so you'll just have to take my word for it. So with that being done it's time to do the wiring harness. This harness is from K-Power Industries and I thought it made sense to buy their harness and follow their whole system so that way if I have any problems I can call them and they support it. A little bit fiddly to get it through the firewall but eventually we make it. And this harness is nice and organized and labeled so all the wires are trimmed perfectly so everything kind of lands exactly where it needs to go. I'm just connecting the cam sensors here first on the back of the head and there's a couple grounds and then it also connects to all the plugs. This other side of the harness goes to all the stuff on the intake side. So we got the injectors, throttle body, idle control, all that. So I'm going to try to fish it through the manifold and make it tidy. It's worth noting that Pretty much everything I'm doing in this video is actually sort of temporary because I am going to be pulling this motor back out to do the engine bay. So if it's not as clean as it can be, that's not on purpose, but I will be able to make it better. Now we're back over to the left side of the harness and we're at the front of the block here. And that top one I believe is called the VTC oil sensor. We've got a crank sensor at the bottom and then oil pressure on the side. Now I'm just hooking up some of the grounds here. Next up is the charge harness, and this wire is actually from the E30 itself. And the lug didn't fit onto the starter, so I had to shave it down a little bit. This wire actually runs straight to the battery, and it's going to be the source of power on the motor. So it's going to go from the starter and then jump across the alternator. So here I am just making a quick little jumper out of some old wire. Fair warning, this is not going to be the most beautiful crimp termination you ever see, but it's going to totally work. A little bit of heat shrink goes on, you'll never know how ugly it is. This last bit of wiring is a harness that interfaces the motor to the chassis itself. So that round circle connector is what the whole E30 talks to, and that's gonna get all your signals on the dash. A couple episodes back I hooked up the coolant sensor on the back of the motor which was kind of sketchy and it didn't really fit. So it interferes with this HVAC cover pretty badly so we're gonna have to modify it a bit. This whole panel also got scuffed up pretty bad when we were dropping the motor in and you don't really see it and ultimately I'm probably gonna cover it but I'm just gonna try to make it nice. Thank you. 
This took a couple tries to get right, and this is probably take three, but eventually it fits. So like I said, this is all kind of temporary. This might get painted black. This hopefully it's gonna get covered, but it works for now. Anyway, back to fluid time. So it's time to fill this up with oil. This thing takes seven and a half quarts, I think. A couple episodes back, I replaced the brake lines up front. So this has to be bled. I'm using a reverse bleeder here and you can see the air bubbles coming up. I also installed the slave cylinder at this time, which ended up being faulty or I bled it wrong or something. I don't know, but I had another one that worked fine. Next step was building the various lines for all the systems in the car. So I was building the power steering lines here and this is going to be for the return. This is my first time making any lines like this. So I watched a couple videos on how to do it. And one trick I learned was to put a piece of tape on this fitting here so that when you actually screw it together, you can see if the line got pulled out. Might be hard to see, but you can see from my tape there that there is a small gap. So I ended up redoing this line and I tried using a rag around the hose to keep it in place. I don't really know if this worked any better, but hopefully it doesn't leak. With one end of the hose done, I was able to kind of wrap it through and determine the length so I could cut it to fit. Next up was fitting the high pressure line, which I had made at a hydraulic shop, and unfortunately it didn't fit exactly. So it needs to do a little modification to the water pump housing. It's still a very tight fit, but this will be something we address later when we pull the motor back out. The clearance down here by the motor mount is also super tight, but it does work. Probably a better tool to use for this, but it's pretty hard to reach in there, so I just use these channel locks. Next up are the fuel lines, and I opted to use PTFE lines in case I wanted to use E85 or just make it future proof in general. These lines take a few more steps to put together, but I actually found them to be a lot easier. First off, you gotta kind of pry the stainless braiding outside a little bit, so you have a little more room onto the PTFE core, and then you have to fit the steel olive on top. You can see how the olive is in between the steel and the PTFE and then how this hex piece is going to sandwich it all together at the end. This line was then cut to length and terminated again. I repeated this process for the return line as well. With all that done, it was finally time to try cranking the car for the first time. 
Unfortunately, I only had one bolt in the starter, so yeah. Until next time.